Hi, my name is Jason and today I'm going to talk about how I set up the vocal chain and all of the experiments I did in my home studio. So when I talk about vocal chain, what I mean is all of the steps between when you're actually singing it all the way to hearing it in your mix. So that means things I learned about the actual singing, the microphone, preamp, the digital audio converter, about using plugins and about mixing to get the final result. So that's a lot of steps. Obviously, I'm not going to go into a lot of detail for each step, but what I'm trying to do is give you kind of a summary context picture that you can help target where you might want to think about upgrading your equipment or upgrading your skills to get the result that you want. I'm speaking to you from the perspective of someone who's been working in my home studio for about five years. So I've, I've been through the experience, but I am not a 20 year pro. But you know, pros and cons to that because 20 year pro, they don't necessarily give you advice from the context of someone who's trying to do what you're doing. So step one is the actual singing. So you think that singing is really instinctual, but I still was learning things because when you actually try to record as opposed to try to perform, there's different details that start to matter. I think it's worth getting a teacher. Someone who's experienced can actually listen to your output and give you a few tips. And I'll just give you one example of a tip that I picked up. Try to avoid hitting your highest note with an E vowel because your voice doesn't necessarily sound that good when you're stretching your range and hitting your E's. It just so you could change your melody a little bit if you need to use the E vowel or think about changing your lyrics so that you don't need an E vowel at those, you know, really punchy moments in your song. That's just one idea. Really suggest you get with a vocal coach and let them actually listen to what you're doing. So the next step is microphone choice. I know that a lot of people will give the advice that you should be using a condenser mic and there's definitely a lot of people who will also give me the advice that you should be using a dynamic mic. I've tried out a lot of mics. I've gone and recorded with experienced people with extensive mic lockers and tried out their mics. This is what I've learned. I have one mic that is my workhorse vocal mic in my home studio. It's an Audio-Technica AT4047. So this mic costs about $700 and you might be thinking, oh, well, wouldn't you get a better result if you had a more expensive mic? I took this mic to a pro level studio when I was trying to get some studio lessons and we did an AB of my mic versus the Neumann U87 that he had sitting there. And I'm telling you, the difference between those two mics was really subtle, probably a matter of taste. I actually chose the U87 in the studio context. I think that part of the reason is that he knows how to get the best result out of that mic because he's used to working with it. Because I would go and rent the exact same mic that wins the shootout in the studio. I bring it home, I plug it into my equipment, and I still prefer my mic because I know how to get a good sound out of my mic. Now, maybe if I kept that U87 rental in my studio for a long time, I would also get good at getting the sound out of that mic. But if it doesn't hit you fairly quickly on an A, B comparison in your own studio, I'm not sure that it's gonna be worth the extra money. So I also took the Audio-Technica mic to a different studio where I was recording and we A, B'd in that studio with that engineer, all of his equipment. And after listening to my mic, he said, okay, let's try this M88 dynamic mic. This is a cheaper mic. This thing costs, say, $300. Again, we AB'd on his studio, his equipment, and I preferred the mic that he chose, which was cheaper than my mic. This is just the pattern that I'm seeing, is that knowing how to use your equipment is quite important, maybe not buying the most expensive mic. I went out and I bought an M88 because it wasn't that expensive and tried it in my home studio, and again, I preferred the AT4047. Now I still use this mic for other things because it's a great dynamic mic, but for vocals, I use the same mic here every time. So after the mic, the next step in the process is the preamp because the mic outputs a very low volume and you have to put like 
50 dB of gain on it or something like that. So to be clear, there are preamps in your digital audio converter that hooks up to your computer, and there are preamps that sit as outboard gear. This device here is a single channel digital audio converter and preamp. It only has one channel, which is limiting, but it is very high quality for a few hundred dollars. The point of this preamp is to be very clean and transparent. So a lot of the sound that we're used to hearing is a colored sound. And ultimately, we're going to want to get to that colored sound probably, which I'll talk about soon. But you need to make a clear understanding of what you're trying to do with your preamp. Are you trying to just amplify, get that 50 dB of gain very cleanly, or are you trying to color it at the preamp stage? Because you can get your color from your plugins a lot cheaper than you can get color from hardware. So if you're working on the budget, I would go with the cleanest possible preamp and then work at the plugin stage. But before I jump into the next plugin stage, I will talk about the hardware because I do have a hardware device. I have a warm audio copy of a classic knee preamp. I do like it. I use it. It's nice to have the physical dials and controls right in front of me to be able to use. And when I did buy it, I really did appreciate that it was improving the sound with some color. And now that I have the good plugins, I would kind of consider it to be a toss up in terms of the quality of the color, so to speak. I feel like they both sound really good and if you run a budget, I think you can cut out the hardware and just use the plugins which are cheaper. So talking about the plugins, I'm not going to go into a ton of detail. I use the UAD accelerator box and plugins. I really like them. The quality of the reverbs really made a big difference. The compressors also are really helping to get the result that I wanted. I don't think that UAD are the only thing that works. Some of my friends really like waves. I think, especially when you don't have a lot of experience to really judge what is the right plugin, I honestly would say go with the top tier name brands because they're not super expensive. Waves, especially, you don't need to buy hardware. They're not really expensive to get into. So I would go with Waves if you are on a tight budget. I think the UAD ones were great, but you have to buy some hardware to go with them. So they are a little more expensive to get started in the UAD, but all great stuff. Um, and they do make a big difference to the color and getting the feel that you're hoping for. Okay, so now let's talk about the mix because I think the mix is making a huge difference to how do you perceive the vocals back. And if you don't have the mix right, you're never really gonna be satisfied with your vocals and you're always gonna wonder, oh, did I record it wrong or am I just struggling with the mix? So I did struggle at this stage for a long time. And what I learned was my recording was fine, but my mix skills were not up to standard to get the result out from sort of the raw material that I had recorded. And the critical factor was when I got the high quality reverbs. It just made so much difference to how you perceive the voice within the mix. If you feel like you're not getting that result, ask yourself, am I getting the right quality of reverbs? And do I have the right experience mixing? I think there's a lot of value in getting some help with your mixes. There's a, there's a lot of people like with my level of experience, for example, that would probably do a mix for you quite cheaply because they enjoy the process and they want the experience of working with other people. And I'm not saying they're gonna be like the best expert mixers, but they probably maybe have access to those higher quality plugins, which would give you an idea of what difference that might make if you don't have those things yourself yet. So to me, that's a pretty cheap experiment to hear the result. So to summarize, I think if you're trying to do all of this for $200, you're going to really struggle uh, with the quality of the hardware and software that you're working with. I think that sort of a good benchmark would be about $1,000 to spend. And I would probably put about $500 of that into my mic, whether you get a good 
you could get a good used condenser mic for 500 bucks or you could get a great new dynamic mic for 500 bucks and then I'd probably put about $300 into my digital audio converter and preamp and then you got a few hundred dollars left to get some plugins all in thousand dollars so if you want to spend more than a thousand dollars on equipment I'm not saying that that's a waste of money and I'm not saying that you know studios that have all of this gear have wasted their money I think if you know how to use the gear then for sure you can coax out just a little bit better performance of the gear what I'm trying to say is that I think that there's a pretty big difference that you'll be able to hear right away between the say two three hundred dollars worth of the cheapest stuff versus a thousand dollars worth of decent stuff but not the most expensive stuff and then beyond that point it's probably true for most people that you should really be working on the quality or material you know your lyrics your performance your melodies these are going to have more important uh, impacts than spending an you know the second thousand dollars on more gear performance matters a lot and good performance good mixes everything they sound good on an iphone and why is that it's certainly not because iPhones are great at reproducing music it's because there's some kind of element to that music which is really compelling so don't get too focused on the gear if your problem is really at the performance level so thanks for watching I have a playlist of similar videos about issues that I've faced in building out my home studio I also do live performance on this YouTube channel and I have studio recordings up on the streamers and YouTube. Check it all out. Thanks a lot.